Intelligence. Intelligence. Yay, it's working. Well, should be here okay. Because we never actually, like, yes. Like, no so full lectures not. over intelligence. Like, your notes are probably slim to none over intelligence. So <laughs> okay. Uh, does everyone have these packets? Maybe. Michelle, you got one of these? Jenny, is Jenny asleep? Uh, no. intelligence What's wrong with you? Are you hungry? I'm oh, I thought you, she just said, now. what's Hired. wrong with you? And you go, no. <laughs> nothing. Nothing is wrong with me. I don't know where mine went, but I'm there. sure it's here somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So in this packet, we're doing intelligence, which if, um, I don't even know. Is this a, sometimes they call intelligence uh, testing and, and individual differences, which is like right what it says right behind me. Um, sometimes it calls it that. Sometimes... Ooh, okay, so it's like, I don't know, halfway in, right after cognition, thinking in language. Yeah. I have like five pages. Oh my god. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, I wrote down this so much. I like sat down and my mom was like, yeah, you hey, I found it. I'm like, I have psychology. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities, mom. Priorities. Okay. Uh, oh, this is it. Welcome, Summer. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome oh, yeah, and we have the Just, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just put your names in. Where are you going with the quizzes that we use our notes? Because I have so many notes, I cannot find the stuff. Oh, this is learning, not intelligence. So, tomorrow in class, we'll be doing. Um, oh, I just decided what I was going to do. Brain. Tomorrow in class, we're doing brain. I know that we kind of talked about it a little bit in FRQ. Uh, but I think we're going to do more of the heads up. Yes. Okay. But um, we're going to use our own Quizlets. Like, I'm, I can't make another eight sets of all the terms of all yeah. 70 brain parts. So we're just going to put our Quizlet terms on our head um, and then hopefully, whatever. Hopefully that works. Okay. I wonder if there's an actual heads up for psychology. There probably is because you can, like, order cards, right? I have an app that's like a Barron's psychology class card. Oh, speaking of Barron's, did you just get my text? Yes, it was. Okay, so I uploaded a PDF of Barron's, um, a review book, uh, on Google Classroom. Thank you. So there you go. Save yourself some, like, 10 bucks or whatever. Okay. All right, so let's go over intelligence. Anyone remember what uh, G... Yeah, general like intelligence. General so spearman, I always think of spearman, spear is like one weapon. He it's one thing. And so spearman says you either have general intelligence or you don't. Of course. F -factor. What? F -factor. No. It said G factor versus F factor. <laughs> is that like general versus specific? You weren't here the first day. Where is that? On number three A. Three A. I've never seen S factor ever. Uh, just no G factor. But I know that he came up with the idea of G factor based on factor analysis. Does anyone remember or what factor analysis was? Okay. Factor analysis just means that he puts clusters of similar items related on a test together. Like maybe questions one through five are uh, reading comprehension questions, and then six through 12 are math-based questions, or whatever. And so he can see what people do poorly on and what people have, like their strengths. And he says, well, typically if someone does really well in math, it's are gonna do well in other subjects as well. And so they're either, they've got that general intelligence or they don't. They're not going to be like, oh, I made all math questions. I got 100% right, but then I'm illiterate and I can't read the, you know, comprehension questions are bad. It rarely that's the case. You know, usually when I like pull up y'all's grades and it only, this only typically happens if someone's failing my class. I will pull up all their classes to figure out like, is it just me? Is it everything? And rarely is it just me. If someone's failing my class, typically they're failing at least two other classes. And so, you know, those are the people that lack general intelligence. Um, and then the people that are typically, you know, B students, they're like A's and B's for everything. They're not A's and B's and then a 12. That, that rarely is the case. So um, I'm not saying experiment is right. I'm saying that's his evidence behind general intelligence. Okay. Um, like I said, it is. Oh, and this goes along with IQ score. 
Like you either have it or you don't. And that's basically IQ. Anyone remember who came up with the testing in the first place? Who came up with like, I'm going to study kids testing. It was, he was French. Uh, Alfred Binet. Uh, Alfred Binet. Uh, B-I-N-E-T. Oh, I didn't have a T. Okay. B-I, yeah. Alfred Binet, French. He was hired by the French government to come up with a test to figure out who the smart kids are and who the low kids are. The entire purpose of his test was to figure out, like, who they could focus on for, like, who's the smarties. So he wasn't trying to do anything besides just figure out who was gifted. Um, who came up with the IQ formula, though? William Schler. Welschler. Okay, wow. Welschler is the IQ test. That's the name of the, I, like, the most oh. widely used IQ test. But there's, like, there's what, Michelle? William Stern. There's William Stern and there's Lewis Terman. So one of them made the test American. And the other one added the IQ quotient, like added the IQ number. Okay, so Lewis Terman, he just made it American. He just made, he just turned it into English. You know, like if uh, baguettes is to berets as, and I, I guess we could say like, is to like whoppers and tractors or whatever is the American equivalent of baguettes and, bagu and, and beignets. Right? I know, I know, but like, in right. terms of like when you say they think French and French stuff, people are like, oh, like baguettes. Not necessarily like the bread equivalent, but the equivalent of like stereotypical French thing. Okay. You know, like the long cigarette. <laughs> like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, what is the formula anyway? Yes, mental age, which is like your ability to function, like what your. Uh, what your comprehension is, what your standing is, over your chronological age, that's your actual age. That's your birthday. Multiply that by 100, you're going to get IQ. So these were just the first. Okay, so um, you're going to have to do the math. Chances are they're going to have one, maybe, math question on the AP psychology test where you'll have to figure out IQ. Um, and you can't use a calculator. Uh, but it's going to be really easy. Like, it's going to be like Gianna, who is 10, she processes information like a 12-year-old. Okay, so based on just, like, common sense, you could probably eliminate some of the answer choices. She is smarter than a 10-year-old. So she's going to have an IQ over 100, at least. If you have any answers that's, uh, that are, like, 85, no, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, because it's going to be, well, mental ages, that's the 12. She can function. And then divided by 10 times 100 is what? 120. Okay. So divided by 10, you're just moving a decimal place over. But then you're multiplying it by 100, so then you're going back over twice. 1, 2, 120. Um, yeah. Math. Math. <laughs> Math. Math is fun. Um, but what if Gianna, oh, no. Jan is 10, but she has the mental capacity of an 8-year-old. <laughs> then it's going to be below 100. It's going to be below 100. It's going to be 8 divided by 10 times 100. She's going to have an IQ of an 80. <laughs> okay. Um, what is considered mentally handicapped? Oh, below 75. Yeah, I think it's below 75. Okay. Um, and I thought I had a, another question, but I guess I don't. Okay. Wait, and then, like, what was the one that, like, gifted? Yeah, it's, like, 135? Okay. Hey, since we're here talking about the numbers, let's draw this somewhere. Gianna's gifted. Gianna is gifted. Okay. Bell curve. Normal bell curve. Yes. Standardized. Does anyone know the mean, median, and mode for intelligence? Zero. Oh. Zero. <laughs> yes, the average person has zero IQ. It's 100. Okay, meaning what number is here? 100. Yes, we have uh, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. 68, 
and 99%. The percentages are always the same. The standard I don't get that yes. at all. What? What? That doesn't make Okay, for it to be a normal bell curve, we'll always have these percentages the same. Not every test gives you a normal bell curve, though. Okay, what do the percentages mean, though? That means 68% of people fall between one standard deviation away from the average. Does anyone know the standard deviation for intelligence? How many points oh, of these are apart? Which one? It's 15. Okay? In between each. In between each. So for 100, we're going to add 15. 115, 130, 145. Subtract 15. 85, 70, 55. Okay, so the standard deviation for anything is going to be different, Megan. Yeah. Like the points. For IQ, though, it's 15. Okay. Which means 68% of the population fall somewhere between an 85 and a 115. So the hefty majority are right there in the average. Okay. There are 95% of people fall between 70 to 130. Yes. And then... 99% of people fall somewhere between a 55 and a 145 IQ. Yes, it's 99%, not 100, because there are people that I'm sure that we haven't tested that are somewhere, so we can't say everyone, we can't say 100% because we don't know. Um, there are some people that, what, 1%, so I guess a half a percent over here and a half a percent over here, that fall somewhere less than a 55 and higher than a 145. Okay, make sense? Any questions about like this normal bell curve? Okay. What? So imagine having one forty-five. You wouldn't be at tutoring. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, so so actually, actually, IQ IQ is relatively stable over age, and IQ is around is set around seven. So if you were 145, you would have been 145 at seven, basically. Oh, and so maybe cool. you can like raise your IQ five points with like. 150, that's. Yes. That's like the half percent. Yes, you are better than 99.5. Brain teasers, things like that, keeping oh, um, like no. sharp, think sharp, reading a lot, um, things like that. Uh, but. Wait, uh, you can go backwards. Like you get hit in the head like with like a bat or something. Yeah, you can be like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> um, but you're not going this way. They did like a study on it, like um, IQ levels in the yeah, NFL. Yeah, I was study about it and how like people who say they rarely ever get hit too still lose because of the drills and stuff that they do. Like they did a study on it. Well, yeah. How, like, IQ, one guy like lost, he was in the wheelchair, he's on like 65, he has the IQ of like a 60, like he can't remember his own name, he gets really busted. Wow. Like he can't, like, tell him his name, he can't remember his name, he can't Yeah. But he's also like a, one of the big dudes that. Uh, yeah, like, linebacker. right, so he's constantly getting hit. Um, yeah, I had a student, and the kid was like a prime example because everyone like grew up like he was in Tomball for his whole life and everyone knew who he was and he was all like oh yeah because he was like not the brightest in class <laughs> like he was and like you know basically when he talked he was like oh, yeah it was real bad <laughs> but then he was like I've had five concussions and I was like oh well, that oh, makes sense so and he goes and he goes and, and when I was like kid I was in G I was in GT yeah, yeah. he was in GT in elementary school, and because of his like five concussions from football, was like barely passing. Aww, yeah, football players. Are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this message not brought to you or sponsored by Miss Taylor. So that was Megan. Said football players are dumb. Wait, what does that mean? Wait, what? Okay. Um. So. Uh, there's different types of, oh, I guess S maybe is, no, fluid and so crystallized. Don't we'll start with S. Okay, so there is fluid intelligence. Like how fast you can answer Yes, how quickly you can answer questions. Sometimes 27. As you get older, yes. it goes down. And, and it's also like uh, creativity. Think of it like that as well. Um, but it declines with age. and But not like 
it declines, I think at like something like 60, 60 years old is when it starts declining. It basically is pretty stable for the most of your life and around 60 fluid intelligence, how fast you can answer questions. So you can increase it, right? Because I feel like that's something you, you can decline. probably you know slow better. down yeah. the declining of it. It's like, but you can never get like a higher fluid intelligence. Like you can, like you learn to answer questions even faster. Because no, not real. I mean, well, but this is you learn more things not, they ask a question. They it's like yeah, just but it's just, I mean, asking like, okay, asking like your grandmother or grandfather, like what life was like when they were young. They know, yeah. they they know it, but they're slow at getting that information uh, out. Like every time I tell my grandma, I'm like, so today in science, we're doing some science with my science. Like, what class is that again? Right. And I'm like, science. grandma. <laughs> but I can't yeah, like be rude, but I'm like science. Would you get it? Like, <laughs> but she's not like old people aren't no, dumb. It's just their dumb. food. Like she in fact, they know more than you because they're crystallized intelligence, which is all your store of knowledge. It's all the vocabulary you uh, you know, all the history that you know, all the equations that you have, all the information they've accumulated your entire life is crystallized intelligence, and that goes up with age because old people know more. They've been around. They have more experience. They have more crystallized intelligence than you because they are older. Of course, you might have more fluid intelligence because you are younger. Your brain is working faster. Okay, so only Sternberg is really saying that general uh, that intelligence is one thing with G factor. Everyone else is basically disagreeing with him. <laughs> Everyone else is saying that no intelligence is more than one thing. There's there's multiple intelligences. One of those guys is Sternberg. And he has the triarctic theory, which means how many intelligences does he have? Three. Three. Anyone know what they are? Analytical. Say that oh. a little bit louder so the camera can pick you up. Analytical. Analytical. Creative. And practical. Analytical, creative, and practical. So um, analytical, think of this as like book smarts. Like an IQ test, <laughs> it's really only focusing on your analytical intelligence. It's not really saying how creative you are. And practical is kind of like the street smarts. Think of this as like common sense. Analytical is math, basically. While creative is, you know, um, does anyone know another way to say creative intelligence? Besides, it starts with D. It uh, is divergent. Divergent thinking, yes. Okay, because well, divergent was, means lots of different yeah, ways. Yeah, as in um, the book the series. Yeah, very <laughs> <the> series, yes. <laughs> okay, so creative intelligence, also called divergent. Wait, what's the convergent? Convergent is not like it's creative. One. There's only one answer, solution. Math. Yes. So well, convergent convergent not really, because like there's lots of different ways to solve a math problem. Okay, well, like 2 plus 2. Can you, you like, like uh, 3 plus 2? But then if you're like, 2 plus 2 could be 7 or 9 or whatever that is. I'm just That's dumb. not. <laughs> so, like, all tests are analytical. Um, not all of them. All English okay. School. school tests, yes, are analytical. Um, well, like, yeah, we don't really hit creative or practical too much. English tests are like really subjective. Well, so what do they mean analytical like, if they're that subjective? I feel like, like yeah, but isn't there like one right answer? No, no. some multiple right answers. Like, like essays. Essays. The best answer. Yeah. Oh, God. Well, 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 like, <laughs> Essay it depends. Because right? if you write, because like think about think oh, about yeah. essays that I assign, like FRQs. Okay. It's not yeah. like oh well, I think the amygdala could be no. Okay, okay. You're you're what what I okay so we're doing like a poetry, then that would be and, and it's like, poetry. An, 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 yes, an, oh, but then it's called an analytical essay. You could like I don't know. I don't do. It just depends. It's testing white. You know that it's Howard Gardner's and even one eight. He has eight intelligences. And so I think of Howard, oh, by the way, Gordon. Sternberg sounds like iceberg. Three. Iceberg has got like three sides. Oh, that's four. Three <laughs> sides. I thought you were going iceberg, like it, ego yeah. three, ego three. Uh, that yes, that too, though. but that's also a Freud. We don't want to, okay. <laughs> but, but Howard Gardner, he's has got lots garden. of intelligences. He's got a whole garden of like eight different flowers of different types of intelligence. And um, oh, ew, there's oh, a whole bunch. Like musical and there's so stuff many. Like Do I have all of them? Okay, I don't have all of them. Can we see um, I wouldn't know all of them. One's musical. That's all I know. 
There's musical, there's interpersonal, intrapersonal, natural, kinesthetic. What's a kinesthetic? Athlete. Oh, I was thinking it was like, wait. No, kinesthetic would be like, I'm a prima ballerina or I'm an Olympic athlete. Why are you like, I don't know why Because that's okay. Because the definition of intelligence is it's not just brain. It's not. Or, it is um, being ability. able to abil your ability to. Oh gosh, crap! It is the ability to learn from your mistakes and then like plan accordingly. Solve or, problems. Solve problems. Yes. Okay. Okay. Where is it? It's uh, right under. Yes, the, the ability to learn from experience. Solve problems and use knowledge to adapt to new situations. That's the definition of intelligence. And so, do like athletes well, do that? Brain, though, because yes. Like intelligence is like to me, like in the brain. And most like, people, but how how is athleticism not in the brain? No, but it is. But like when you like athlete is, I don't know. It's just using your like what uh, I, representative I, heuristic. You're thinking of like a jock who doesn't learn to know anything. No, I'm just, just thinking, thinking like math. That's a noun, and I feel like intelligence is like. Okay. <laughs> I, it's just interesting okay, how my like, brain hurts so bad. Okay, okay, I'll move on. <laughs> oh, does anyone remember what savants were? Are yeah, it's people that are very talented okay. on one thing. Yes, but they're mentally handicapped. Yeah. Savants oh. typically are mentally handicapped. They're going to be scoring very low on an IQ test, but they have this one ability whether that be mathematical, whether that be spatial or musical, like. They might not be able, they're not verbal, maybe. It's like good but, doctor. Oh, I don't know, good doctor. It's okay, it's the show oh, that we're in. Is he just autistic? He's yeah. A, yeah. yeah, but autistics like, he are not savants. He can't, but he can't like do a lot of like no, he normal stuff. So but he's a he doctor, autistic. right? Yeah. So he went to medical school and is not mentally handicapped. Yeah, but like in the show, they make him like, he has <laughs> trouble okay. with like well, everything. Yeah, that's <laughs> autism. Yeah. I, autism is not. But it, Okay, okay, okay. Okay. These people might not have like been past like fifth grade education. So, okay. Yeah. Um, but they have this amazing skill and ability. Okay. Oh, it's like, oh, have anyone ever seen Glee? Like, Brittany off of Glee, she's a dumb, like, she's really dumb. But then she gets like MIT because she's like, part of it. Like, she's not actually like, part of the show. What? And then she goes to MIT and she gets like, I, I do remember that. And then she is, you would think yeah, she got like, she's like, oh, I got a 65 on my IQ test. And we're all like, Brittany, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> The Britney code, she just oh, learned a bunch of words. She's yeah. so cool. Oh, really intelligent goes to MIT, apparently. Uh, once another reason where TV fails the cognitive <laughs> youth. Because, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so we talked about Alfred Binet. He was the French guy. Um, Louis Terman came and made that uh, IQ formula. We talked, oh, we mentioned Wessler, at least uh, Megan mentioned Wessler. Wessler, the W A I S, I think they sometimes add a C at the end if it's for children. Uh, but this is the most widely used intelligence test. Like you can't just go and take it. Like you have to go and like someone has to proctor it for you. Like give you the test like at a testing station. How much money does that cost? It's probably not cheap. I mean, if an AP test costs a hundred bucks. Um, this costs like 200. <laughs> you're, okay. Um, okay, so it is uh, yields a final IQ score, but determine how far a person scored. And blah, blah, blah. It gives you uh, the percentile. Have y'all do y'all know what that is? Oh, it's like the ninth percentile, so you're the top five percent. Yes. So if I said, yeah, if I say Gabby scores in the ninety fifth percentile, like what does that mean? That means she scores better than ninety five percent of people. Yeah, because you're like the top. Yes. Yes. Oh wow. So, one hundred minus the percentile equals the percent. They call it an SAT. Yes, yeah, yes they do. SAT it's SAT. actually really cheap. Really? It's like oh never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was it? reading here and it was like giving you a list, but then it says testing can cost like under it says testing can cost anywhere from two hundred to seven hundred. Yeah. Seven hundred? And then it says the average is five hundred to six hundred. Yeah, like well, a, so like, I'm never gonna get to my like a teaching test. So like to become a teacher, that test itself costs five hundred bucks. Dang, that's not worth it. You're telling me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I said my son when he was born, true story, his head size was in the 99th percentile. Um, what, what does that mean? His head was bigger than 99. Yes, only one percent of babies ever born has a bigger head 
than my size. It's for his large brain. For his large brain. Does he not? Is it not a twin head? Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All babies grow into their head. There's like a well. There's some kids that have pretty all. big heads. That's true. It used to be yeah. thought that because women had small heads. That they but they actually have bigger brains. Isn't that a dumb <laughs> No. Women no, and men what? have the same size brain. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm not. No, I would say, like, I actually thought. Or corpus callosum might be different. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, they have the same size brain. I mean, I mean it, it makes sound sense. like a Pinterest article or something. Women have bigger brains, and then they no, have I good thought I well, so I remember something that says like yeah, there's the good doctor, that right? Are, <laughs> that <laughs> whatever, but then it wasn't okay. So um, one hundred normal. Oh, right. we said this. This is the whoop. This was the normal curve where average is hundred, and then we have sixty eight percent of people fall somewhere in the one standard deviation. Oh, what percentage of people fall one standard deviation above the mean? How'd you do that math? Divided by two. Right, because it's going to be half below, half above. So if it's 68 for both, like for half, it's like above. Half of <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't yeah. speak words. I, I'm good at math. Uh, okay, so let's talk about making a really good test, like the EP test. Um, standardization means what? It's been tested before. There's it's, test there's a pre-tested group. Um, and there's also, it is standardized and also it's instructions and it's rules. So, I mean, like, like the EOC next week for U.S. history. Oh, they always have to be like, wait, next week? Wait, yes. Wait, wait. It's next, uh, for you, yeah, it's next Friday, probably. Yeah, mine's changed. Yeah, so it's Friday. So, we're taking the psych test and we take that on Friday. Yes. Because the psych test and the EOC is the same time and day. And so if you were taking both, you will take the psych test the correct day, which is Thursday, and the EOC the next day. So how are they going to, so I'll just, what will the test is? You will take the, oh, you're not taking the AP, it's no, not, but like, AP history. So let's say people who aren't taking the AP exam, they'll take their EOC on that day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, so like we as teachers have that like book that we have it's to read so out of annoying. and we like have to read it by state law because it has to be standardized. It can't be like, okay guys, who needs a pencil? Um, all right, just fill that out the top and you you can just, just take the, you know, open up the book and get started and uh, I forget what time it is, just finish. Like you can't do that because it all has to be the same rules or regulations because that is what the pre-tested group got. And you have to compare your scores to that score. Right. Um, How do you yeah. know the pre-tested group scores if there was no pre-tested group for them? What do you mean? Like, the pre-tested group, it was the last year. Yeah. Okay, but the very first time, like, how do you do Oh, that? yeah, they um, always have, like, a – oh, I felt like I told this story before. Um, oh, I have it because <laughs> – I haven't something. taught intelligence to you guys because it was no, over you break. said something about like the junior high yeah. the EOC, but it didn't make sense. Yeah, so um like the year before they did the EOC, they had the seniors for that year take the EOC. But, they didn't, but, they all but it didn't count it. because they already took like a different so they took a so they didn't care. right and so the like the average and therefore oh, like the standard deviation of like who should be passing and who should be failing was based off of that pre-tested group. Well, that pre-tested group didn't have to take it like for a grade. So they took it, the average person got like a 30 or something. And so that was like the average. And so then everyone's curve for the next year was based off of that. And so everyone got, like if you got a 50 the next year, you got commended mm -hmm. because of the pre-tested group. That's why it's getting harder and harder Again, to get commended because people, well, they also have to keep, yeah, they have to keep retesting and revising. And so, you know, what's the Flynn effect? Is it on there? Everyone's getting smarter over time. Um, so they have to keep retesting the IQ, like having a different pre-test because IQs keep getting higher. That does not mean that the average IQ is greater than 100. It's still 100, but that 10-year-old that thinks like a 10-year-old is way smarter than a 10-year-old 50 years ago. A 10-year-old today is way smarter than a 10-year-old 50 years ago. So the Yeah. Just because they have access to better information, you also have access to more of like vegetables and minerals and therefore your brain is better developed. Like in the past, if you wanted a fruit, you better eat the fruit that was in season because we didn't have like greenhouses or like trade between countries. It's like, oh, well, I guess I can't have an apple because it's not growing. Now we have apples all year long. 
Oh, we also like can pump our apples. I spit. Pump our apples full of vitamins and stuff like that. Um, cotton candy grapes. Hey, cotton candy. That's true. Those are so good. All right, so there's different types of reliability. What is reliability? Oh, it's how. Consistent grades, yeah. Yeah. getting the same score every single time. Consistency in the results. So there's different types of reliability. There's test and retest. So that would be like, uh, okay, so uh, I give you guys a test and then I'm like, oh crap, I lost everyone's scantrons. I'm sorry guys. Um, we're gonna have a retest the next day. And so, and then the next day I find those scantrons, but you already took both tests. Well, if it's a reliable test, those grades should be the same. Like Summer got an 88 the first test. She should get around an 88 the second test. Well, wouldn't she get a better grade if she already took the test the first time? If she didn't study and went home and was like... Like, that's, like if you already kind of know now what's going to be on the test, right. and you go home and study, like, not you didn't more, but like studying what's on the test, theoretically, wouldn't she get a better grade? Theoretically, yes. But yeah, the, like, but it shouldn't... Right. Yes. Um, so, so the reliability might be a little off. So tests are not usually reliable. It's hard to find a reliable test, especially a test retest reliability. All the other ones are probably easier to be more reliable. An alternate form in class, I have alternate forms. We have test A and test B. It's the same question, but the answers are scrambled. Like the questions are scrambled. I and one time I. Uh, I don't know if you know this, I'm probably giving way too much away, but I just scramble the answer choices. Oh, yeah. um, I don't scramble the questions themselves because a few years ago I did scramble the questions themselves and it became a less reliable test because test A, all the questions were in order of me teaching it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But then I scrambled test B. I was like, scramble questions and answer choices. So then test B, and it was like, it was development and like learning or something, that test. So it was all like Erickson question, classical conditioning, Freud question, operant conditioning. And it was just like all over the place. And because it was all over the place, test B's brain had to go from one subject to another while test A, it was like an easy transition from one to the next. And test B's test grades, I wanna say were like, the average was eight points lower. So now you don't do that? But you now I don't do that because I don't want to screw test B over and make them work harder than test A. Even <laughs> it's, it's, Now now you realize it's just the answer choices that are scrambled. The questions are in the same order to make sure that it has more reliability. This whole article me one time too. Like one, one time I just, or sometimes I just get lazy and scramble. Like I just write tests or version A and version B, but they're all actually the same. Yeah, I've done that once, but... <laughs> Then it's like, then people are like, um, this one looks, this one's handwritten. This it, and then people are like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, then it was more of a like, this is obviously not scrambled. Uh, yeah. And then uh, split half reliability just literally means like the first half, like questions one through 50, get the same relative score as like 51 through 100. There shouldn't be a easier half or a harder half of a test. It should all be around the same. Okay, those are all reliabilities. What are y'all like? A push? What's going on with A push? You should teach like, your husband that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me. <laughs> let me scramble them. Okay. Let me be an advocate really quickly for my husband. My husband's class is hard. I know that y'all are in the middle of the gauntlet, or is the gauntlet over? It's gauntlet in the middle. You're in. Okay. The gauntlet is hard, but then when you get to the test, the t would you rather have? Like, what would you rather have? No, 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 no. Uh, would you rather have, oh, I got like a really easy, like it was really easy in class, but I got no college credit, but I got a hundred in my high school class that won't matter in the long run. It won't save you any money. Or where it's all like, yeah, my GPA took a hit, but at least I got college credit. I mean, yeah. I think it's too, but like, it's just, the I know, I think more, like when you have, with a, like you said, it's just all in order and it makes sense. But then right. you get quiz B and it's just in a completely different order. It's really order. It doesn't help you learn better when I take quiz B because it's harder. It's harder because, like you said, it's just completely different order. 
I'm not going to mention that to him, but I challenge you. I challenge you to do that. No, just smile. He'll do that, like the soft smile thing. Like, no, he'll go, you know, and then just be like, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Literally, just go, he does that. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, it's funny. <laughs> I mean, and, I'm not even in a push, so like, I don't care, but I know that. But you know where they're coming from. So. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Validity is does the test measure what it's supposed to measure? That was really good. Do that again. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this whole thing. No, the meter. He says, I don't know a lot, too. You ask the question, goes, I don't know. How well, Hannah know. will literally just be like, Mr. Taylor, look at this meme about history. And he looks at it, and he gives the most, like, awful response anyone could get. He just goes, okay. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it's so funny to me. Oh, oh, it's, it's really funny. funny. You were like, like some history teachers who like to test their students on uh, their personal matters. That's true. Yeah, that is not a, a valid test question. If I um, you asked this one that was like, what is Miss Taylor's favorite something color? Like, right, right, right. a part of the brain. Which oh, honestly, I mentioned enough. Right. And then I knew that someone was going to be like, or someone's it's mom. Taylor. Yeah. And is this your no, it's, no, it's the angular gyrus that allows us to read in our head. Oh, yeah. Angular gyrus. The best part of the brain ever. Okay. So, it's not a question like that would not have been a content valid question. If I have different content on the test, then that is not a valid, it's not supposed to measure what it's supposed to measure. It's like, hey guys, here's a question about the brain, or here's a quiz about the brain. And I'm like, JK, it's all classical conditioning. That would not be content valid. Uh, predictive validity. Um, certain tests like the SAT or the um, ACT should predict how well you do in college. That's literally what it's for, is to have predictive validity. But if someone, I've known actually several people that did really well in the SAT and they end up dropping out of college. Um, so it did not have predictive validity. Well, I just could ask a question, Natalie. There's some people who can't, like, either their parents shelter them too much when they go to college and they have too much food and they don't know what to do. With well, I, I don't know what this kid, this kid was like. The lazy kid in class, but really gifted. Mm -hmm. Like never took notes, but if I called on him, he always knew. Um, and he was in the top ten percent. Top ten percent did really well, and he did not last a semester in college because wow. he was just like he. I didn't even have motivation to go to class. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have face validity, meaning it needs to appear. The test appears to be a test. Oh, that was the thing where you said like. So the teacher took them out and they were like, yes. the and they were like major grade. Oh yeah, by the way, that was major grade. Yes, not okay. It needs to appear to look like a test. Like you needed to Right. You right. Uh, construct validity. Um, how well the test was assessed the construct for which it was designed. I don't really understand what that means. Um, construct validity. Is this on here? I don't know. Oh, if it's not on here, we're good. We're good. None of this is on. I just wrote down. Oh, yeah, none of the reliability. It just says, it just says reliable and valid. Okay. But I do want to bring attention to um, the second half where it says speed, power, group, and individual. Where? Um, the back, maybe. Oh, yeah. I think I, I did this wrong in class. We had a question once oh, yeah. where the answer was. The answer was power test, but I think I said it was speed test yeah. or something. Okay, so a speed test is a time test. Or it's like, I'm going to give you as many, like, do 100 of these masks. It's those power. It's, mad minutes. it's a mad minutes. Mad minutes. Okay, um, a speed tests are mad minutes. Power test, correct me if I'm wrong, Does it, is it SAT a power test? Do the questions get harder as you go on? Okay. Well, that's like... Okay, so here's the thing. Um, uh, I don't know if you know this, but when you get into graduate school, you have to take a GRE, just like an SAT gets you into college. The GRE gets you into graduate school um, if you want to get like your master's or something. And so the GRE, when I took it, because I was all like, I don't know what I want to do. Maybe I'll go into grad school. Let me take the GRE. And I totally forgot that I took it and I never went to grad school. So... Um, <laughs> But I remember sitting at the computer 
and there's like a progressy bar type thing at the top and it's all like question one is easy if you get it right question two is medium if you get it right question three is hard and it shows you your level of intensity but if you okay and if you get it wrong it goes and then it goes back to like name a color and i'm like oh god because then you know you got the previous question wrong and so that right there that's a power test where it gets more difficult um, when you get it right, and then if it you get it wrong, it knocks you down to an easier question. I guess it's trying to build your confidence. But then when it goes back to like, what's a circle? Then you're all like, oh no, <laughs> am I that dumb? How do you leave this? Like in math, like you have to have like a probably. No. There, I mean, there's the definition of a line. And a line segment, so an array, yeah, like, and a square, and no, a triangle. Like, Circle definition. Oh, uh, Megan, you asked what retardation was. I said seventy. It's, I it's, did. It's, yeah, seventy, not seventy-five. Oh. Oh yeah, I did. Yes, you did. Um, and then it says Down syndrome. Uh, an extra what chromosome? What number? Why? No, that would make you a boy. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Twenty-first. 23rd is your sex. 23rd is either XX if you're a girl or XY if you're a boy. Um, and an extra 23rd chromosome would just change your sexual makeup, but it would not give you Down syndrome. 21st would give you Down syndrome. You could have three 20, 23rd chromosomes. Uh, like when people are like, there's only two genders, boy and a girl. That's actually a big lie. Uh, it could be... It could be an XXX, it could be an XXY, it could be an XYY, or it could be, it can't be a YY, there has to always be an X. Um, or it could be an XXXY. Well, you can have four. Yeah, if mom brings, because mom's going to bring an X and dad's going to bring an X or a Y, but sometimes mom and dad's sperm and eggs are not like, they're not normal. Um, and so, like, this could be an abnormal uh, woman and an abnormal dad. So this is mom brings this really and dad brings this. Ooh, dad. Uh, but an XXXY, if there's ever a Y, it's a boy. But this is going to be an extremely female boy. And this is going to be, this is an X. As in like this is going to be an X. Yes, or? physical characteristics. Not have oh, physical. physical characteristics. But also it could change like sexuality, we don't know. Um, but this is an extremely masculine male. They think that like a they don't know. They had to do a genetic makeup of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. They think Arnold Schwarzenegger is an XYY because of how chiseled and how like masculine he looks. That's so yeah. Yeah. What about so this would be a, a very feminine female. How do you this would be a yeah. like a more hourglass shape, less and less body hair, um, oh. more narrow of a nose, things like that. So what every like monster? Very Barbie like, wow. yeah. All right, every girl wants to be a, a, a genetically, woman. A genetically um, <laughs> special. I mean, this is not normal. This is a genetically flawed person. Flawed. Yeah. Flawed. Look how look how flawed she is, <laughs> and how flawed he is. They should just make. Oh my gosh! If they do, they might make one of these. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if those people are even like uh, sterile. I think Why? it might be sterile. Well, they're obviously like donkeys or mules or whatever. Which one is sterile? Oh, mules. 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 Wait, how does like this is like a mule? Wait, what's the difference? <laughs> uh, a donkey and a horse Make makes wow. a mule, mules. and makes and mules are yeah. they, genetic, so like, they, genetic, like, they just can't have babies. babies. Yeah. Because they can't make dumb Yeah, like a centaur. Horses. A centaur would be <laughs> sterile. Okay. Going Here. back <laughs> to this. Okay, that was really interesting. We're talking about this. We always talk about the most random stuff. That's true. Double horse. <laughs> kid I, the kid I yelled at. Jonathan, kid I yelled at. I feel like attitude achievement. Yeah. yeah. Just see the acronym on the backside. Yeah. Like, porn. It just says porn anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do we have any, no, we're talking about porn after school on Thursday and Friday this week. Nice. Okay, two days, because cognition's heavy, just, heavy just on the test. put up flyers, like, 
Support. 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 Attitude and achievement. AP tests are achievement. Uh, unit exams are achievement. A driver's ed test. Attitude. It's not seeing like. Like Do you know everything there is to know about driving? It's, are you going to be a good driver? Just like an SAT is, <laughs> are you going to be a good college student? Um, achievement is, have you learned? While aptitude is, can you learn? Have you learned achievement? Aptitude, can you learn? Okay, let's take a little quiz and then we're done for the day. This is a achievement quiz. Good job, Megan. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, what's the missing, oh, never mind. I'm not even looking at it. Oh, I, what, Michelle, are you worried that we haven't really covered about number nine? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's important. The uh, IQ is a lot to have to do with genetics, but there are environmental factors as well. If you are malnourished, if you, um, like, like, Americans in general, and I'm sure a lot of people, uh, Americans dinner, our IQ falls a little bit during the summer because we get a little dumb during the summer because we don't have year long school. But like Asian cultures, they have year long school. They have the same number of days off, but they have like, they have like a like a month off for Christmas or like. I don't know what sounds like nicer, but. Could you imagine, uh, like, after you come back from Christmas break, like, you don't remember anything. It's like coming back from Christmas break. You basically have three weeks of, of Christmas break and then only, like, a month. Oh, I don't know. That sounds pretty nice to me. Have, like, it's so bad. <laughs> yeah, we have, like, long weekends, like, every month. Mm -hmm. like, and then, the, like, you have siestas? Like, spring break, we get two weeks. But then in the summer, you only get a month. I'd rather I know. I've had <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because when you have your around school, no, they say that like your IQ, well, you're you never catching up. And they say there's always at the end, at the beginning of school year, there's always like a catch up. Yeah. It's like I think about how so, many. Like, with year round, would you get you would get used and you would remember. Well, you, you, you never have to remember, like, review. Like think yeah. about every math class. You Typically, the first like basics. month of yeah. school Favorite. is all like. Let's learn how to factor again. It's all like, oh, I don't know. I think it'd be cool to have like deal on school with big breaks. Yes. Or just breaks. All the time. Breaks all the time. No school. Ah, hello. You get a month like intelligence is what does it give a number? It doesn't. Heritability of Okay, oh, let's mention this word. Okay, uh, bring your attention to number nine, second. It's not a circle. It's like a second dash. Of course, it's heritability of intelligence. Okay. Doesn't have a number. I think the number is nine. No, it's like 85. But I don't I don't write that down. But I'm going to write it down anyway because I'm going to show you what that means. 85%. Okay, the word heritability does not mean the percentage you get from your parents. That's not what that means. Heritability means, and this, okay, if you're paying attention online, the one of you that liked it, or actually one of you that's watching. <laughs> yes! Hello. Who is it? I don't know. Comment your name down below. Right. You get stickers. I'll put you in a drawing to win. Okay, so um, heritability means that any... It's the person. Okay, let me see. Think. Heritability is always a tricky term to understand. Okay, it is a percentage of differences between two people that you could attribute to genes. Meaning, like, let's say Summer and I take an IQ test. Our IQs are probably going to be different. Honestly, summer is probably going to be higher. Okay. <laughs> Any difference between our scores? If heritability is 85%, I don't know if it is. I think it's like, it's either 75 or 80 or 85. It's one of those numbers. This The difference in our scores, 85% of the difference can be attributed to genetics. The other 15% of the difference of the scores could be like, maybe she had a better night's sleep that night. Or maybe she is more nourished. <laughs> or, or maybe whatever. So that just means, like, if our IQs are different, let's say that they're 15 points apart, 
Well, 85% of 15, you can attribute to genes. The other percentage points, it's just environmental factors. It's like the twins. Yes. So twins who have identical genes. 100% of differences between their scores is not genetic. It's environment, which means 0% heritability. Does that make sense? They have the same genetic makeup. Any differences between them, you can't say it's genes. They've got the same genes. So the differences between them is number. environment. So their differences of intelligence is 0% of heritability. Does that make sense? 0% of any differences is genes because they've got the same, which means if you have, oh, oh, Mark Twain, Mark Twain, y'all know Mark Twain, yeah. like satire, writer, author, whatever. Um, Mark Twain said, one way that we could get rid of this whole nature versus nurture debate is you take two babies, you put them in barrels. You keep them, in, he's a joke, he's a satire. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He, but he was like saying this as like, we should do it for real. But he was, he's like my husband. Like, oh, we should do this. But it's like, not really what you should I'm do. I'm going to DJ homecoming. Exactly. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, I um, thought he was. <laughs> from the long and far. So you put two babies in a barrel and you keep them there for 18 years. You barrel. raise them in a barrel for 18 years. You just feed them like through a little hole in the barrel. Not gonna lie. And then at 18, you open up the barrel, you give them IQ tests. He says a hundred percent of their. He says a hundred percent of their score differences is about genetics because they had the same environment. So any percentage of differences, if one of them got like a hundred and the other one got like a hundred and fifteen, those fifteen points is one hundred percent based on genetics because they had the same environment. So that would be zero percent. No, that would be one hundred percent heritability. Identical twins are going to have zero percent heritability. In differences, zero percent of their difference is genes because they have the same. While two random people so, wait, in a so barrel, a hundred percent of any differences that they have is genetic. So heritability is the amount of the differences that is you genetic. that you can contribute to genes. That is genetics. Yes. Okay. Whew. No one commented back. Oh well. Okay. So here are some questions, and then we'll be done. Uh, aptitude tests are designed to measure what? Previously learned fact, future performance, previously learned skills, or IQ score? Future performance. A standardization sample for developing a test should be representative of all types of people who on the test are designed. Is an early version of the test to determine questions that differentiate individuals? Is a set of norms that will determine what score should be considered passing or should include people from all different ages, groups, ethnic groups, genders? Wait, what? Is it a standardization? No. A sample should oh, be, so be representative of the people. Yeah, of the population. Right. Oh, here's an IQ test. It was designed for Asian kids, but I'm going to give it to you guys. No, no. Well, that's why D would make sense because people of different ages. Everywhere. I bet, 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 bet. Uh, the flood effect is finding that. A, yes. Advantages of group tests as compared to individualized tests include they achieve more accurate results. They can be given to a large group of people at one time and are cheaper to break. The ability to establish rapport between the examiner and examinee put them at ease. Or they have been proven to be more reliable and valid in measuring abilities. Not D. Not D. Uh, group tests can be given to a large group of people. Like, yes, and it's cheaper because it's not like one Scantron versus 50 Scantrons. That so would be like, we should do group tests. No. Uh, well, my, my eco kids are going to do a group test. They hate it. Oh my gosh. It's because, it's because two story. people, it's like one person's smart, one person's dumb, but they're both like, my idea is right. Yes. And, like, and then no. you're just sitting here like, that I have a funny story. We were in IT. We were, no, sorry. <laughs> we, were in, we were in DC chemistry and there's only 10 people in my class and we had a group test because we begged for it. Like, we wanted one really bad. Right. Anyway, so then we all worked together, right? Mm -hmm. We all failed, so he <laughs> had to curve it. And we all got the same grade. We, got, we all got 70 because we all failed it. We all just use our, use the same answer. That's such a flawed system. Okay. I know, it really is. Uh, which of the following best describes Charles Spearman's G of intelligence? There are many factors that determine intelligence, but genetics is the most important one. The internal validity of intelligence test is G. A general intelligence that underlines success on a variety, variety of tasks is G. 
Giftedness is determined by both innate ability to perform and experiences one has in life. Or G is measured by the speed of which one can process information. It is C. Whoa. Yes. Okay. If a test is reliable, it means that it yields consistent results. C. Oh my gosh. Freddie's 10 years old with a mental age of 12. Oh, we did that. Okay, 20. 20. <laughs> well, they're going to usually do the same numbers because it has to be something you could do in your head. So it's got to be something that. It's a 10 year old. So, just always that's saying, that's 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 it has to be more than 100. It's right, right. It has to be. Oh, that is. Okay. No, just skip oh. it. Just skip it. Oh. <laughs> that one. Too. Okay. During development of standardized test questions that are answered correctly by almost all students and those that are missed by all students are eliminated, which is true of the AP test. If everyone gets a question wrong, they throw it out. Uh, why? Okay. Only questions that are moderately difficult should be included in the test. These questions fail to show individual differences in abilities. These questions are poorly written. The question may be valid, but they're not reliable. B. It's B. Oh, yeah. It's B. They uh, fail to show individual so differences in abilities. It wrong, it's not like, well, you, it's not showing that like, their different IQs are different. Right. It's just like, yeah. Um, my zip, my like Scantron that I have it will tell me based on, like, it'll give me a score on each one of my questions of how good of a question it is. If it's a question that, like, oh, Kids that got A's got it right, and quit, kids that got the, the failed got it wrong, that's a good test question. Yeah, but if it's all like uh, whether people got an A or an F, they got it right, then basically that means they guessed. One of the 90s tests for history, one of the questions is like 7% got it right. 7? Seven? 7. He didn't go down. 7% got it right. He's so mean. Okay. <laughs> oh, hey, Barrica. Barrica. Who was 75 takes longer to solve problems that require abstract reasoning than she did when she was 35. This tendency indicates a decrease in what? Fluid. Fluid intelligence. Oh, okay. Uh, intelligence tests tend to measure blank thinking. Tests of creativity tend to measure blank thinking. No, convergent divergent. Convergent divergent. Creativity. Creativity is divergent. Convergent is just one intelligence. Or trust. Uh, the form of mental retardation that is caused by the presence of an extra chromosome is Down, Down syndrome. Down syndrome. Well, I don't know. Okay. If your score falls to the 75th percentile on standardized tests, which of the following is an accurate interpretation? C. 75. Yes. Or yes, 75 or below you. Uh, which of the following? What? Zero. We'll no. Say zero. No, no, test for test reliability. It's got to be D. Yeah. That's just correlation. Yeah, that's correlation. Wait, what? So it's one or negative. Well, we want positive correlation between test scores. So the, the big, highest one the highest, the highest positive number. Yes. Okay. Yes. Like B is, is a strong correlation, but it's a negative correlation. Yeah. I don't want my test retest to be negatively oh, yeah. correlated. You pass one, but you fail the other. Yay. No. Yeah, pass, pass. Fail, fail. Um, I think this is the last one. Whose research and conclusions triggered an emotional debate over ethnic, oh, we don't know this, don't ethnic know. differences in intelligence? That was Jensen. It is not. It is Jensen. Um, Jensen. 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 I feel like it's Jensen. Jensen. But How do you make it? Is oh, it, is. it is. It is. I just thought it was because we learned about it. Okay. Um, there are differences in uh, IQ for races, but they think that. The whole purpose of IQ test is to prove like racism should be okay. Um, like because it's because the tests are biased. The tests are biased. Like um it'll be like Independence Day and you're like the fourth of July. Right. right. And it's all like if you are Hispanic and you just got to this country and you have to take this IQ test, you're all like, like, I don't know the fourth of July because that's not my country. Yeah. Or if you are like low income and you like live in an apartment and you have a maintenance man that fixes your stuff and it's all like a wrench is to a screwdriver is you're like well i've never had to fix my own stuff because i'm a maintenance man that does that if you have a house then you have tools yeah. but it's all like if you don't if you live in an apartment then you probably don't have those tools and so low socioeconomic class might have also have different like books assigned to them in high school therefore they might have different vocabulary words which means that their vocabulary is different yeah it is interesting Wait, who was um, he, I remember him, Francis Galton. That seems like a really good Google question, Whoa, Gabby. He you matched your stuff. <laughs> so, like, I matched your shoes with your bracelet. Yeah, what am I, a bum? 
I have a question. I never met. Hello. Are we going to stop this? I am. Um, have a great, uh, have a great tutoring session. Uh, Gian- session? 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 session. <laughs> uh, Gianna, uh, uh, say goodbye to the, to, to the crowd. Goodbye. Um, goodbye one person. Like Smash that, that like button. Button. Bye. 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 Bye